Hi, I'm Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. Discover, understand, and overcome. You hear Angie say that all the time. It is really important in the beginning of understanding what's happened to you to really discover and understand what's happened. That after a discard, there are so many questions that come up and so many um, confusing and horrible things that you think in your own head. Or if you've chosen to leave a narcissist, these things can still come up. We know that it's not easy to have a relationship with a narcissist end however it ends, right? It's never, it's not a normal breakup in any way, shape or form, no matter how it ends. And so some of the things that people go through, you may have all kinds of things go on in your mind that are never things you've thought before. If you've had breakups with like more healthy relationships in the past, or um, just have had people come in and out of your life. It's nothing like it is when it's with a toxic person. And especially if it's been a long enough relationship where you're deeply trauma bonded to that person. Here's some of the thoughts people might have. Let's just run through them like a list and see if this resonates with anyone. Okay. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to heal. I don't know what to think. I don't even know what happened. I don't know where to begin. I don't know what I did wrong. I just feel totally lost. I have no one. I must have done something to deserve this. How could it all have been a lie? How could he say or she say that they love me and then do something like this? I don't even know who I am anymore. No one understands what I've been through. No one believes me about how bad it really was. My friends just say, get over it. You're better off without them. It feels like they don't understand. My friends, they can't understand what I've been through. Was it really as bad as I thought it was? Did something about it, about me change? Did something about the relationship change? What could I have done differently? Was this my fault? Are all men or women toxic like this? I must deserve this hurt. I'm not enough. I will never be happy. Will I? Why do I miss them even though they're always so unkind to me? Was I the abusive one? I mean, the main thing people say when people come for coaching and they are in crisis or they have just been discarded is why. Why is this person really a narcissist? Was it as bad as I thought it was? Um, can I tell you what happened? And will you tell me, is that really abuse? Um, the the need for validation is huge. And, and after a discard, it's so confusing and you basically feel alone and lost. When you're with a, nar a narcissistic person or anyone who's toxic, the reason that these kinds of questions come up is they've twisted the truth so much and they completely basically made it made you feel at fault usually, or they've twisted the truth and tried to um, not hold any accountability for their own actions. And so you're either frustrated, you're confused, there's all kinds of you know things you feel, but the blame shifting that happens um, it's like they're so striking and exacting with it that you begin to believe it yourself. And so not only not even logic can get through that, because by the time you are in this kind of situation, your trauma bonded and the cognitive dissonance is really strong. So your heart's saying one thing, your head's saying another. And the confusion, it gets it's really deep. It's a deep confusion. So logic is is great. You know, you can say oh, that wasn't true but then I feel this, like a lot of people will say, but I, I know he's terrible or she's terrible, but I, you know, I love them. So you can see that, that it's not just a simple answer, right? So understanding what happened to you after you've been with a narcissist is really important. And there are tons of videos out there. I mean, just, you know, check out any of Angie's videos, check out the ones here, anywhere else that you find sources for videos that have, information on every aspect of narcissistic abuse that there is. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of info out there. So start educating yourself. It's super important. Get into, um, uh, just get into it. Just dive in and, and learn as much as you can, because what you start to feel is validated. And that validation is really big when it comes to getting over and healing from this type of abuse. So let's talk about some things that might help. Besides understanding, okay, understanding is number one, you know, got to start doing your own homework and researching and find there's a ton out there, like I said, so 
that part's great because we have the resources available to us. You can go no contact. No contact is so important. It's important because it helps you break the trauma bonds. Exposure to a narcissist or to back to the toxic person in any way, even peeking at their social media pictures, whatever. No contact meaning don't even look at your own photos. Throw them out if you can. No exposure. Keep the exposure at zero if you can, because every exposure is like um, it, it, there's I mean, there's a lot of videos on trauma bonding and I can link those as well. But basically understanding that you're bonded not only at an emotional level, but on a bio, on a chemical level in your body because of the way trauma bonds work. So any exposure is basically toxic to you and will make it more difficult to get past this first part of healing. So no contact, no contact. Get And then, so the second thing with that is when you're no contact, it really, really is important to have support. So get in a support group if you can. Um, Span is available. Spanly Home, if you do not like Facebook, is available. And there's a small fee for that one, but Span on Facebook is free. And it's a great community of support. So check that out. And getting a coach or therapist, being able to talk it through and this goes with another point too. Um, being having support, having someone you can trust. T so telling your friends can be okay, but uh, friends may not understand, and family may not understand. So unless someone's been through this, it can be really difficult for them to understand. People just don't grasp what no empathy means. Like they can't grasp it on a level of how it feels, and it's it's very difficult for people and they may try and they may love you but they may not get you <laughs> so make sure you have support from people who get it okay and then another point is get the hurt and the toxic out of you just do what you can to get it out journal get on the support groups support groups like i said and things that can help get it out of your body are things like exercise walking dancing moving singing anything like that to help your body. It affects every part of you. That's the problem. It's not just a thought thing. Like I think this person's bad. I should walk away. It's way, way beyond that. It's, it's in your body. It's in your emotions. It's in your, your head. It's in your soul. Really. It's, it's, it's everywhere. So getting it out in any way you can, you know, in every part of your, your being, you move it through, you know, exercise, like I said, for the body, Friends, only if they aren't mutual because they can turn into flying. Start getting really serious with self-care. That's the next point. We aren't really taught what self-care is in our culture. We're not taught how to, or in a lot of cultures really, we're not taught to care for yourself the way you would care for someone else. And if you have been a people pleaser um, of any kind, then you have likely put yourself last for the duration of this relationship, if not longer in your life. So learning to put yourself on the top of the list for care is important. It's important to pay attention to what nurtures you and allow yourself the time that you need to get over this and to heal. That this isn't a fast process that, you know, you just feel better the next day. It takes time and it takes effort on your part, putting back towards yourself. Okay. So if, um, with self-care, if you don't know where to start, ask. Ask in support groups for some tips and ideas. Um, I have a self-care coaching group that is actually starting next week. If anyone needs that, it's available, and I can link it below. Self-care is actually, to me, it's a, it's a necessity. It's a necessity for a healthy living. People who are happy and healthy in their life know how to take care of themselves. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, it doesn't mean you can't do things for other people you know, in your life, it just means you're putting yourself on the equal playing field. And you know, you're, you're viewing yourself as equal to others instead of beneath others or not worth anything. Building self care builds your self worth in ways that are not um, mental, if that makes sense. They're not thought processes that lead you there. It's just a felt sense of having self worth. So it's important to understand that if you have been discarded, this was not your fault. This is the this is the nature of being with a narcissistic person that they they are the ones who create the reality of the way the world works around them. They have a delusional sense of how the world should be. They idealize, they, you know, we know we can go on forever about how 
it seems they think. However, they have likely been in a, in a cycle of love bomb devalue, love bomb devalue, love bomb devalue. They may have thrown some silent treatments in there that lasted long enough to feel like a discard. And then there's finally the final phase, which is the discard, which we know isn't the final phase because then begin the Hoovers and that's a whole nother thing. And there's a whole video on that from last week. So you, <laughs> you can go watch that if that's needed. But for now, talking about the discard phase, um, this cycle was set up by the nature of how narcissistic people um, behave in relationships. They, they have this, the push pull thing going where they push you away and pull you back in, push, you know, or vice versa. They pull you in, push you away, pull you in, push you away until they finally, for whatever reason, it, and there's a whole lot of usions. Oftentimes it's that the masks has fallen off enough where they can't hide and they're forced to be accountable and bam, they're gone. And I mean, there's a lot of reasons, but there's one. <laughs> so uh, to understand that actually it doesn't even really matter what their reason is. This is a cycle. This is a cycle and it's how every single relationship in their life will work. Okay. And it's not you. So understanding it's not your fault is important and realize that you couldn't know what you didn't see or know to begin with. So it's not your fault. You didn't lead yourself into this and you didn't allow this to happen to you. Okay. Try and try and shift your focus to things that you like. Try and minutes in the day, even if that's all you can do. Try and find gratitude for parts of your life. Fine. I mean, you can start that at the very beginning. Gratitude lists are important. So our lives are lived from the inside out. What we feel and believe on the inside. What we believe is actually more important than what we feel. What we believe on the inside is how the everything else starts to flow in your life. Okay. So if you have been with a narcissist, your inside has been programmed to believe all those things we read in the beginning that you're wrong. It's your fault. You're not worthy. You know, like this list is, it just goes on and on and we could have done an entire hour just with a list of the horrible things we feel. Okay. But it's important to start to shift that and shift the way we perceive our lives from the inside and find worth. And so gratitude lists can start even if you're still with a narcissist and don't know if you want to leave. Okay. Just being self-care too. begin where you are right now. Everybody self-care. <laughs> that's, and that's it. It won't do anything but make it better. It will not hurt you. Meditation is useful when you're in the discard phase. It may be really, really hard to focus for even 10 minutes at a time on a meditation. Find guided ones online. And I have a bunch on my Facebook coaching page. There's three on this channel. Angie has a couple and they're all over the internet, but find 10 minute ones, short ones that are positive and well, they usually are positive, but focused on um, relaxation. Don't do anything too complicated or difficult. Keep it super simple and try it. Even if it's three minutes, um, meditation. And then the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is activating the vagus nerve. Those are two ways to calm your nervous system. Your nervous system has been activated so um, much through through the abuse of the relationship and then accelerated and like amplified within the discard because of the amount of cortisol and the amount of adrenaline that have been pumping through you at this point. So if that is going on, meditation and activating the vagus nerve, which I'll talk about in a second, can help to calm your nervous system. It may not feel like a magic cure, like, oh, I meditated 10 minutes and I feel so much better. I'm fine now. It may feel like it's doing nothing, but it actually is. It's, it's proven to help calm the nervous system for anyone who has anxiety. Um, but especially if you have an acute trauma or something like this going on, it really helps a lot. So activate the vagus system, vagus nerve, sorry. What does that mean? Okay, so things like deep breathing, laying on your right side, okay, cold shower, what else here, gargling, and singing. Those things activate your vagus nerve. Oh, I can go like, give you all the research with it. But I'm just going to put leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Um, choose your influences wisely. Make sure you are not engaging with toxic people, make sure you're not engaging with um, people who really aren't believing you just let it just 
move on. Don't try and force people to understand. Try to keep the influences around you light and pretty. Don't sit and watch, you know, horribly depressing things on Netflix or whatever, violence, whatever. So anyway, those are some tips, quick tips really for ways to begin healing um, from the discard. Could go on and on with this. Can tell you that there's a trauma bond group coaching, self-care group coaching, private group co private coaching for any of this. A lot of people do need to do that. And, and it's um, it's there for you if you need it. Um, share this with a friend if you feel like they're going through this. That might help someone else. Anything that you think would be helpful or kind or inspiring or anything at all, leave it in the main comments. That as people watch this video, they can go down and read and get a little inspiration and a little love and care from all of you. And go ahead and hit, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all. Take care. Goodbye.